Let's take a look at how four Nordic nations have established a unified air force and how these four fighters made this possible. On March 24th, the air forces of Finland, Denmark, Sweden, and Norway announced an agreement to operate their combined forces of over 200 fighter planes as a unified Nordic air defense force. This move is a historic first between these countries and was ratified via a joint declaration of intent or JDI on March 16th at Ramstein Air Force Base in Germany. United States Air Force General James Hecker, who is also the head of NATO Air Command, was present for the signing. Today, we will take a look at what this means for the region, what fighter planes compromise this newly formed Air Force, and what each jet brings to the table in terms of operational capability. The decision to unite the Air Forces of four nations under one command carries with it the ultimate goal of being able to operate seamlessly together as one force. This newly formed Air Force rivals that of a large European nation in numbers and command and control is to be established by developing a Nordic concept for combined air operations which will be based on an already known and established NATO methodology. It is important to point out that when this agreement was reached, Finland and Sweden were not yet part of NATO. However, on April 3rd, Finland became the 31st member of NATO and as of this recording, Sweden is expected to formally become a member soon. So the question is, if all four nations are or will soon become part of NATO, why the need for a seemingly separate Nordic Air Force? There are actually four reasons that have been cited in the document which was shared following the agreement. First, combining the Nordic Air Forces allows for integrated operations, planning, and execution. This makes sense since the operating environments and conditions are very similar in the four countries involved. Secondly, the Alliance allows for flexible and resilient air basing meaning runways and maintenance facilities can be used by the partner nations more openly. Then there's the third factor, shared situational awareness. It's hard to imagine, but prior to this agreement, each of the four nations had to conduct their intelligence assessments and tracking of aircraft independently. The new agreement creates a common contiguous defense zone that essentially covers the Baltic Sea. And finally, the fourth reason stated is an allowance for common air education, training, and exercises to be held, allowing crews to cross-train and mutually support each other's forces. All right, now let's get into the aircraft specifics for each of the four nations involved and what each platform brings to the newly formed alliance. Starting with Norway, who had been operating the Lockheed Martin F-16 Fighting Falcon up until 2022, which has been replaced by the Lockheed Martin F-35A Lightning. Norway has over 50 F-35s and is one of the early adopters of the Lightning, having acquired their first F-35s all the way back in 2017. In fact, Norway was the fourth country to acquire the Lightning after the United States, Israel, and Italy. The F-35 is without a doubt the most numerous and successful fifth-generation stealth fighter, with some 900 examples delivered and over 600,000 flight hours logged on the global fleet. Additionally, the Lightning has also won several high-profile fighter competitions, more on that later. As to what the Lightning brings to the table, we can start with sensor fusion and an airborne command node. Along with stealth or low observability, the F-35 was designed to integrate and leverage allied air assets and air defenses. This integration is so thorough that the F-35 has been often referred to as a quarterback in the sky capable of directing assets and reading the enemy signals to plan its next moves. The F-35 also makes use of a Distributed Aperture System, or DAS, which provides 360-degree spherical situational awareness via cameras and sensors placed throughout the aircraft. Additionally, the F-35's fleet is being upgraded to the Block 4 standard, which, among many things, include numerous improvements in computational power, avionics, new weapon options, and even a more powerful radar that can detect and track targets at much longer ranges than today. I've done an entire video on the F-35's upgraded radar. I'll leave a link in the description below. Given the F-35's current and planned capabilities along with its lowering per unit cost, we can begin to see why the Lightning has won virtually every fighter procurement competition it has entered, including those for Finland and Switzerland. Moving on to the next partner in the Nordic Air Defense Agreement, Denmark, which currently operates over 40 F-16s with 27 F-35s on order. 
The F-16 Fighting Falcon or Viper is a fourth generation fighter which was initially designed as a day air superiority fighter. However, throughout its long and storied career, the F-16 evolved into a true multi-role platform, implementing the first use of relaxed static stability or fly-by-wire flight control system. The F-16 is an agile aircraft and an excellent dogfighter. With over 4,500 examples built, the F-16 is the world's most numerous and combat-proven fourth-generation fighter. Although the F-16 is a non-stealth platform, it features low operating costs, high reliability or mission-capable rates, and mission flexibility in both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground roles. Denmark's F-16s are an excellent placeholder as their new F-35s are delivered and become operational. Next, we turn to Finland, who is currently operating some 50 F-A-18Cs with 64 F-35s on order. Like the F-16, the F-18 or Hornet is a multi-role fighter. However, unlike the F-16, the Hornet was designed for carrier operations and features an arresting hook, folding wings, and landing gear specifically designed to operate off of carriers. Finland's Hornets are land-based, and while also a non-stealthy fourth-generation fighter, the F-18 is a combat-proven platform with relatively high mission-capable rates. Moreover, since Finland shares a land border with Russia, Finnish Hornets have extensive experience flying near the border and likely tracking Russian aircraft that are in proximity to their mutual border. Still, the Finnish Hornets are nearing the end of their service lives, which is one reason that Finland has placed the largest order for new F-35s of the four Nordic countries. And last but certainly not least is Sweden, which finds itself in a unique position. While Norway, Denmark, and Finland are all moving to the F-35, Sweden is opting for the latest version of the Gripen, the JAS-39E. Aside from being an excellent aircraft, the Gripen is also designed and manufactured in Sweden. The Gripen is an extremely reliable, low-cost to operate, multi-role fighter designed specifically to operate in the harsh Nordic environment. Today, Sweden operates about 70 of their C and D models, which are powered by a Volvo RM12 engine, a license-built version of the GE F404 engine similar to those found in legacy Hornets such as the ones operated by Finland. The vastly improved E-model of the Gripen will be powered by a General Electric RM16, which is similar to the F414 engines found on the Super Hornet. The E-version will also feature advanced avionics and electronic countermeasures, which should provide an offset to the Gripen airframe's fourth generation design. In terms of the Nordic Alliance, the C and D versions will likely be used in similar ways that the fourth generation F16s and F18s are used, while the E version of the Gripen will likely be deployed in roles that are more aligned to the F-35's tasking, providing advanced detection along with command and control capabilities in a fighter-sized airframe. The formation of a unified Nordic Air Force is a direct response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine last year. In terms of deterring and potentially combating Russian aggression, this significant agreement has the potential to benefit all parties involved. While each Air Force brings unique capabilities to the table, they also share many similarities beyond their proximity. Collaborating would enhance the effectiveness and potency of air defense tasks and aerial surveillance, as well as providing greater flexibility and unpredictably in war planning. In today's era of multifaceted aerial threats, ranging from traditional fixed-wing aircraft like fighters and bombers to low-altitude cruise missiles, swarms of drones, and even hypersonic weapons, Pooling resources for air defense makes more sense than pursuing an independent approach. This holds true from both a strategic and economic standpoint, particularly when confronting a common enemy with a potentially larger force. What do you think? Is the formation of a Nordic Air Force a good idea? How does NATO fit into this overall setup? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see how the F-35 won so many fighter competitions, you'll want to check out the videos in the playlist I've made. Click or tap the thumbnail on your screen right now to watch the first video in the series. Now you know.